This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. Southeast Missouri's economy has seen some pockets of resiliency during the Great Recession, as well as some areas that have been hard hit. Now, some counties like Cape Girardeau and Perry County both boast unemployment rates that are among the lowest in the state, but other counties still struggle with jobs. Bruce Dommelslicky is an economist at Southeast Missouri State University, and he's the director of the Center for Economic and Business Research. Thank you so much for coming by to talk with us today. Glad to be here. Well, the latest data that we have is from uh, is from 2012 second quarter, and we see that unemployment shrank during this second quarter as compared to uh, to 2011. But at the same time, it's also puzzling because not only did the unemployment shrink, but employment also went right. down. Uh, could, yeah. could you kind of tell us what's 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 going on here? The only way that can happen. For unemployment to fall, uh, unemployment rate to fall, and employment to fall, is if the labor force went down. The labor force is people looking for work or who have a job, and probably the you know, there, there are a lot of reasons why the labor force might go down. People move, up, move out of the region, people retire, but probably the the major reason in this case is people just get discouraged. They look for a job, they look for a job, they can't find one, so they just quit. And once they quit looking, they're no, no longer considered to be part of the labor force. So even though the unemployment rate's <coughs> going down, it's kind of with a, ca uh, with a caveat there that that, that, that employment rate's also Right, shrinking. that would be part of it. And, and also there's a strong seasonal factor in that we tend to find in the second quarter, unemployment does tend to go down anyway. Employment mm -hmm. tends to go up just because of seasonal things. The economy picks up a little bit from the winter doldrums, things like that. So there's, not, so there's, there's seasonality going, going on here along with other things that are kind of make, make it so we shouldn't be overly optimistic about the numbers at this point. Now, Cape Girardeau County is seeing some good trends though, with, the, with similar trends to the region right. as a whole. It's got a, it has a, now has a 6.2% unemployment right. rate, which is good, but again, we see that employment rate going down in the, in the region as well. Right. I, I think Cape Girardeau, it, it, its unemployment rate has typically been about 1.5%, 2% less than the national rate, and that's sure. been, been the case for quite some time. And I think it's a, just a, a matter of the fact that the Cape economy is pretty big, it's pretty diverse. And because of that, we tend to find that it, it, it holds up pretty well even when there is a significant recession like we just went through. I mean, we've got two big hospitals. People get sick, they're not going to wait for the recession and to go to the hospital. And some have even said that a, a recession is good for the university. People can't find a job. Well, let's go back to school, improve my skills, and then maybe I'll get a job later on. Now, Perry County is one that's always been among right. the lowest in the state. Right now, it's a 5% unemployment <coughs> rate. What, what makes Perry County so resilient? Why, why is its unemployment yeah. rate always so low? Well, I think there's a couple of things that are involved here. One is, remember that these unemployment rate figures are by residents. Sure. And so there are people, clearly, who work in Perry County. All they got to do is drive down here. They have a job. And there's probably quite a few. I mean, Cape has about twelve to 15,000 people on net who come into the county every day to work. So there's probably some of that. And plus, Cape, uh, our Perry County has some pretty resilient industries, some that are still growing pretty well, doing pretty well, and, and that's all contributed to that very low unemployment rate. Now, on the uh, opposite side of the coin, there are some counties that <coughs> right. um, have uh, unemployment rates that have, that have really been, that have been stayed stubbornly high. I'm thinking places like, like Iron or, or Pemiscot right. and, 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 and Reynolds County. Why, 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 why is the unemployment rate so stubborn in those places? I think when you get out to the um, Ozark region, Reynolds County, Carter County, I think you're looking at an area where there's not very good access to the rest of the country. You know, the roads are not very good. They're all two-lane, windy. And that, that alone makes it difficult for sure. businesses to be looking at that as an attractive place to locate. You don't have a lot of population either, and so it's just very hard for, for growth to take off. I think in the boot heel, part of the problem there is one of a structural unemployment. Individuals who really don't have the right skills, the right enough education to take the jobs that are available. And that's kind of true throughout the country, that structural problem, but I think it tends to be a little more severe in the Boot Hill counties. Well, what have we seen with, uh, with, pers with personal income growth? Have we, seen, uh, have we seen much movement there, much improvement in southeast Missouri? It's been pretty good. It's been averaging around 4% uh, on an average annual rate. It dipped a little bit in the last quarter, but I don't think there's anything uh, there that's significant. So I, I think personal income has picked up, and as a result, we find retail sales have recovered mm -hmm. quite a bit. They've even grown about 3.5% over the last year. Perhaps won't grow quite that fast in the coming in this, in this year, but uh, those kinds of things have helped 
the region recover somewhat and, and hopefully continue to grow. Now that, that those strong retail sales, is that indicative of, of improvement in the economy or is that a sign of something else? Um, it, it's partly a, an improvement of, of in the economy. It's partly just a, a fact that when personal income grows, people spend it and, and that's kind of what's been happening. Now, now moving forward, what are some what are some factors that you see that could that could help or or hinder the uh, the, the, lo the local economy here in Southeast Missouri? Well, you know we're tied into the national economy pretty strongly. There's just you know you, you can't avoid that. You're you're part of the state. You're part of the nation. So I think what what happens in the nation is going to have a big impact on what happens here. And I think going forward, things like you know it, Europe's far away from Southeast Missouri, but if they go into a recession, which they probably are already, some of those countries already are, they're going to reduce their imports from us, and that's going to affect, obviously, this region. I think you also find the fact that the, the, you know, the government, state, state government in particular, has not been able to increase spending like it normally would be coming out of a recession. And in fact, employment at the state government level has been declining. And those kinds of things have hurt not only the state, but obviously the various regions of the state. And so those kinds of things going forward have, a, uh, have at least a potential to kind of throw us off track a little bit. And, and at best, we're probably going to look at moderate growth, 2 to 3 percent going forward. Now, you, you had mentioned uh, Western Europe, or what your Europe probably moving, into, yeah. uh, moving into, a, into a recession if they're not already there. How about China and India? Are we seeing, are we seeing slower growth uh, in those emerging economies than, we, that, than was anticipated? Yes, uh, perhaps not unanticipated. China sure. had to slow down. Something like 50 to 60 percent of their GDP, gross domestic product, was, was the production of, con of new, new housing, new factories, construction. That's unsustainable in the long run. And so they were due to slow down. Obviously, India has had, had some other problems as well. Uh, a lot of it has, has to do with their economic system and some of the, the regulations they have. I mean, ours are not the best, but theirs are horrendous in trying to start a business there. And those kinds of things are slowing down Southeast Asia, and as a result, obviously it's going to have an impact upon us as well. Now, is, is inflation something <coughs> that we really need to worry about right now, or is, is inflation pretty well under yeah. control? It's, it's under control. The only, the only caveat we ever have right now for inflation, obviously, are energy prices and food mm, prices. Sure. Those kinds of things can, can spike, and if they do, they tend to bring other prices along with them. Now, how about the, uh, the local housing market? Are we seeing any, any signs of life <laughs> there in, in, in real estate? Yeah, I think the housing market it never got quite so bad in this region. It did tumble quite a bit in, in the right after, or during and right after the recession. We're seeing some recovery, and we're seeing some recovery nationally as well. And so that's kind of a good sign that maybe finally housing is going to turn it around and stop being such a drag on the economy. Is that one of the reasons that Southeast Missouri never really quite had the big hit that a lot of other areas had, the, like the combination of right. having the diverse economic base sure. in Cape Girardeau, plus the, you know, yeah. the, the housing market didn't, right. didn't, didn't go through the roof. Yeah, we had headwinds, but they weren't just quite as strong as we found nationally. And I think those kinds of things have helped us from really going into a really severe recession in, in the region. Now, on a, on a national scale, um, how, how do the, the, the current political atmosphere and you know, the possibility <coughs> of reduced federal spending also, the possibility that there could be that the Bush era tax cuts could yeah. could expire. I mean, what 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 do you see there? Well, you know, it, hopefully, once the recession is over, or once the election, I should say, is over with, finally Congress and the president, or the president elect, whoever it is, will finally sit down and say, we got to do something. If we have the the tax cut ex expire, the cuts in spending that we're talking about, and if those things hit, we'll have a recession very early next year, and there's no doubt about it. The economy just can't take that kind of a hit right now. We're talking today with Dr. Bruce Dommels Lickey. He teaches economics at Southeast Missouri State University. He's also the director of the Center for Economic and Business Research. Thank you so much for coming by. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us today on Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration between the Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University, the City of Cape Girardeau, and KRCU, the public radio station for Southeast Missouri. Our executive producer is Jim Dufek. I'm Jacob McClellan. Thanks for watching.